goodness. Okay, so um, that Justin Bieber song is stuck in my head. Lonely. I don't know that song. Oh, it's a really good one. It's a really good song. Um, okay, Brandy, so. Does it sound anything like Sorry? Like, I'm so low, 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 low. Ew. Okay, never mind. Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of yeah, whiny. No. It is kind of whiny. Yeah. Um, but I'm for it. No. No. Mm-mm. How was your week? My week, I spent my week prepping for NaNoWriMo, like doing some serious fucking prepping. I even made a bullet journal. So I did some massive prepping for NaNoWriMo. So it's day one. I was asking you, Brandy wouldn't tell me how her first day of NaNoWriMo went. So how was your first day? My first day was productive. I wrote more than 2,000 words. Good job. I started at midnight. So our um, the, we have a regional group. Um, an Antelope Valley group, and we had like a, a little uh, first day kickoff type of deal. At it was from supposed to, the way she set it up, the schedule said eleven p.m. to one a.m., but it was re- really like at midnight because people and there was literally only just two of us because everybody else was like, "Oh no, I'm going to bed." So I'm tired. I'm not. My heart's not really in it. Yeah. So. I got on there last night and wrote 787 words. And then I was like, all right, I'm done for the night. I, I was, my goal was to hit 500 words. Mm-hmm. And I did it. that. You crushed it. Good job. So today I got up and I wrote more words. And then um, there was a, a kickoff party on the NaNoWriMo website. I mean, it wasn't on the website. It was on YouTube, but the, some of the, um, NaNoWriMo uh, uh, liaisons and, and interns uh, were on YouTube and the um, co-founder, executive director or whatever. And so there were some writing sprints oh, okay. with prompts and stuff. And the prompts were actually helpful to my story because they, they were relevant to my story. So nice. Um, before I left the house, I had hit uh, 2,100 and... 29 words. I think it was 2,129. Maybe it was 2,149. But I'm well over 2,000 words, which is good. The daily um, daily word count goal is 1,667. So I hit that shit. I passed that shit. I surpassed that shit. And when I get home, I'll probably write some more. So day one's not over. I don't, it's, it ends at midnight, so <laughs> I'll probably over. put some more words down and, you know, get another uh, milestone, and I'm trying to get ahead because last last year, I literally only hit, like, 4,400 and something words. Like, I didn't even get to 5,000. It was ignominious, to say the least. Ooh, that's a big word. Uh, disgraceful. <laughs> that's a big word. <laughs> it means disgraceful, and... I am going to crush this shit. I'm going to, I'm going to hit that 50,000 word mark this year. The, uh, my novel is probably going to be way more than 50,000 words, but I'm going to hit that 50,000 word mark. I'm going to win NaNoWriMo and I'm going to get the fucking winner's rewards. And that's all I care about. So you can actually win the NaNoWriMo. If you, well, I mean, there's not one winner. If you get 50,000 words, you win. Okay. That's, that's a win. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, there's a prize. <laughs> like you, like you set goals for yourselves. Like right. you said, tiny little rewards. Like we're we're gonna get sushi once she hits however many words. Okay, so the okay, so I have my ten thousand word goals, but I can make in like I can do as little as like every five thousand words. You know, do some like smaller rewards. Even though like one of them is like pins and sushi. I think well, it depends on the pins I get because there's some pins that cost like fifty dollars, and I don't even spend fifty dollars on sushi. So <laughs> for two people, maybe. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I'm just thinking about like the last time I had sushi, I bought three things. I bought, no, I bought four things. I bought two sushi rolls for myself, one for Norman and a seaweed salad for me. And the total was like 38 bucks. Yeah. I mean, like sushi is not like super expensive, but it's a nice reward. Yeah, it is. And I need, I really need a Manny Petty so bad. So that's going to be, so yeah, um, I have my 10,000, um, word count reward is some, uh, wireless headphones. So maybe my 5,000 word reward will be sushi. Okay. 
That, I mean, obviously I should hit that this week. Cool. So maybe on Wednesday. We getting sushi? It's very possible. <laughs> if I'm already at 2,000 today and today's day one, if I can hit 5,000 by Wednesday. You might be able to go by Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. yeah, Tuesday. So, yeah. Okay, that's cool. 5,000 words, uh, sushi. Cool. Guys, keep Brandy motivated. <laughs> Send me messages on Twitter. I I basically, I gave up on Facebook. I don't post anything on Facebook anymore, really. Um, so Twitter is where I am. And if you want to wish me encouraging words, I'm at Fleeks Brandy on Twitter. And you can cheer me on. And um, I can post my, I haven't posted my um, my word count on Twitter today. But I will um, if I write some more or if I go to bed before or I'll post my work count on Twitter just to keep myself motivated and keep myself accountable. OK. Um, how was your week? Well, um, Halloween was yesterday. That was cool. But before Halloween, I treated myself <clears throat> to a Manny petty because um, mom was like, oh, you should call the Lancaster Nails and see if they're open. And they were. And so we made appointments because they're appointment only. Right. So I went in and I got myself a pedicure. I got these toes beat just right. They were all up in the toys, my toes. I was like, yes. And then like. <laughs> Listen, you, I'll pay you an extra $10 if you like do like massage she, them very slowly. She did the thing. She did the thing. And then like, I'm usually not a big fan of the chair massage. I was living for the chair massage. Did you fall asleep? <laughs> Girl, I was just like, oh my God, this feels so good. I bet it does. It felt great. So, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and spring for a manicure. And then I got the gel nails. I got the gel nail and yeah. they love, they go crazy over my nails by they, I mean the ladies in the nail shop. Because I got strong nail. You got strong nail. Strong nail. Yeah, they do. And they do. Um, yeah, it was nice. I, I treated myself and... Um, Today is the official, well, yesterday was the official end of our contest. I'm going to go live really quick. So if you're listening to the podcast, thank you guys for listening. If you guys follow us on um, Instagram and you guys are following this contest, we are about to go live right now. Actually, we're going to go live right now. I'm connecting and we are going <laughs> to officially <laughs> announce a winner when I want to check and dinner. We're going to announce a winner for the contest. So I'm really excited about that. I really want to give away one of these shirts. And um, this content will live on in infamy. So we had 21 entries. What up? We had 21 entries. And um, we're going to pick a name. So I've written the names out. And Brandy, turn on the light. <laughs> I don't know what that means. So it was like, turn on the light. Ghost for real talk. Turn on the light. The light, I, the light is on. I had it like in my dungeon it's down dark. here. Oh, yeah. I, gotcha. I had it in my, my seclusion dungeon. We're trying new things in here. So we're going to announce a winner. So um, we're going to draw two names today. And so Brandy, two names. And what are they going to win? Can you stand up and show them your fancy shirt? Oh my God. I already told you. How okay. She can't. Shirt. Now I can see. Okay. Well, hang on. You can see my shirt. All right, let me get up. I have to do. There's chair noises. Oh well. Chair noises. Oh well. Okay, so here's the front. Yay! The front is bolt bitches, and then the back. Oh, flex on like, them. Do I look like Arnold? Flex on these hoes. Yes. <laughs> to do it. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and mix up? Your cup of names. Show it to the the people. You mean cup of numbers? Numbers. Cup of numbers. Shake right. it up. We've associated names with numbers. All right. So number one, the best winner is number eight. Number eight. Numero okay. ocho. Numero ocho. Let's or see. numero alto, if you're Italian. Okay, so let's see who number eight is. And number eight is That's the Ticket Podcast. Oh, that's fun. So that's the Ticket Podcast. You are our first winner. That's the ticket. That's the ticket. And um, slide in the DM with your address and your preferred shirt size. All right, we've got one more winner. One more. 
this is difficult. Like, it, this should be a fish bowl. I should have used a bigger fish bowl at home. If you'd have told me, I would have, I would have bought it. Um, let's 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 stop. Um, I do. I have a fish bowl for drawings. Okay, I bought it specifically for drawings. Great. Um, All right. Let's see who's going to be the next winner. Number. 15. Number 15. Okay, let's identify who number 15 is. Number 15 is Edge underscore Lady. That's fun. That's a fun name. Um, Edge underscore Lady, you are our second winner. So slide in the DM. I'll send you guys messages. And um, you guys are our winners. So let me know your shirt sizes. We've got, I think, large, extra large, and 2X. You didn't get any smalls. No. <laughs> we're not small. And we're not going to buy not smalls. small. And we're not offering smalls. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks for the tiny people. Like, Sorry, tiny people. Annalyn needs a small at all times. Well, oh, well. Oh, well for her. Anyway, so. I think Grace is going to be one of those people um, that needs a small. Those too. are the winners. If you guys are watching this, thank you for participating in the contest. Thank you for entering the drawing. Yes. Thank you for following us. Thank you for being a part of this podcast. And um, I will message you guys later. And if you get this before I message you, send me your address and your shirt sizes, please. And thank you so much from the Bolt Bitches. Bolt Bitches. Bolt Bitches. Say bye, Brandy. Bye, Brandy. <laughs> Didn't you say Twitter Live? I could have sworn you said Twitter Live. Mm -mm. Okay, let's get back. So, um... We just announced the winners on Instagram Live. And if you were there to join us, thank you. If you're watching it or you watched it, thank you. And um, to our two winners, thank you guys so much. And again, that is edge underscore lady on Instagram. And that's the ticket pod. So um, that's the ticket. That's the ticket. Thanks so much. Other than that, the week's been good. Um, time changed. I feel like today has been the longest day ever. Okay, so it was fall back, but honestly, like it's getting dark. It's dark. So, do we really get an extra hour? Or no. we, we, I was up early. Er, were you? Yeah, I, w I woke up like at six. I usually wake up at seven. So, that's about right. And usually it would be six o'clock and it's five o'clock. We're getting an extra hour, but the day does seem long. But I accomplished a lot of things today. I was out in the garden, girl. I was like, oh, I, I planted some peas um, a few weeks ago, and they're popping up. And I planted some collard greens by the chicken coop. Those are coming up. Are the chickens going to eat those? I hope so. No, um, I mean, like, are you, are you like, <laughs> they're, planning they're, for they're, them to eat it, or are you a little planting bit them for us to eat it? They're, they're, dual, they're dual purposes. Um, but don't eat my food chicken. Don't eat my food chickens. I've been planting and just getting my, my, my garden ready for the next season. I planted some radish seeds and I planted some more, um, long green bean seeds. Like they're like yard long beans or like super long beans that grow. The ones up. that they grow at the store, like they have in the store that are like this. Mm -hmm. and you just snap those. Buttons. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, see how that goes. <laughs> Um, I mean, other than that, it's all good. We're still here. This election is actually, if you guys are listening to this, when this episode drops today it's is election, election day. day. Yes. So if you've done your part, good job. Listen, every single vote counts. Even though the electoral college is bullshit. Vote. Just vote. I'm not going to electioneer and tell you who to vote for. You probably already know who I want you to vote for, but just fucking vote. Just vote. That's all we're going to say right now. And while we're going there, I'm Sunny Hepburn. And I'm Brandy Fleeks. And this is Book, Book of, of Lies. Lies. The podcast. You sounded very sad about it. <laughs> it's Walt, bitches. <laughs> All right, listeners. Hello. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the drawing earlier. We kind of sprung that on you. But um, if you're a new listener, welcome to the show. If you're an existing listener, thank you guys for coming back. We love you guys so much. And we wouldn't be here without you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, we might, but you know, but you it's know, it's more fun when you're here. It's more fun when you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so come back. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe, leave a review. You can connect with us on social on Twitter at Book of Lies Pod, on Instagram and Facebook at Book of Lies Podcast. And um, you can visit our website at bookofliespodcast.com. We have a blog. We've got all of our previous episodes there. And um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Am I missing anything? Um, um, YouTube. We have a phone number. You guys, if you guys want to call in to our phone number and leave us a message about <laughs> a your- message. <laughs> scams or ideas about stories for scams or scam stories um we have a number i have to go into my phone and find it but we do have a phone number for you to leave voicemails so yeah so um what brandy said we have a youtube check that out book of lies podcast and brandy's going to get you our phone number so if you do want to call us and leave a mama message we'll play it for you okay so our phone number in case you were interested. Okay, see, now, now it's doing stuff. Ugh. All right. Listen to the rest of the episode. I will have the phone number at the end of the episode. Thank you. <laughs> Our Google Voice number is 424-394-1981. Thanks for the rescue. You're welcome, sister. I'm here for you. So, um, call us. <laughs> so... Call me, Danny. Call me, Danny. That's um, a Daria reference, in case you're wondering. Call me, Danny. So, call me, Danny. I'm trying to sell door to door or cell phone cards door to door for the school uh, fundraiser. Third episode of the season. It's called Cafe Disconnected. Damn, Brandy. Use a Daria Rolodex, huh? Encyclopedia. Girl, Daria's my jam. I've been. Watching Daria since I was, what, 15? The Encyclopedia of Daria. (laughs) So, Brandy, I think you want to ask me something. Oh, I do? Um, What are we talking about? Yes. (laughs) That's exactly what I want you to ask me. Uh, So, guys, we're staying tried and true, and I didn't tell Brandy what we were talking about today, but you guys know now, don't you? So, um, we are going to talk about the great Canadian maple syrup heist. There's scammers in Canada. There's thieves in Canada. Listen. <laughs> Liars, listen. cheats, and thieves. Uh, I've been following this thing that's been going on in Nova Scotia about these fishermen, and it's pretty messed up. What's going on in Nova Scotia about fishermen? The indigenous people have fishing rights and basically they don't have a fishing season. They can fish whenever they want. Mm -hmm. The commercial fishermen have a season and they're pissed because indigenous people are fishing out of season. They're feeding their families. They're feeding their families and they're, they're able to sell fish outside of the fishing season. And the non-indigenous white Canadians are mad. And so they are doing things like burning up fish. uh, They call them huts. Fish smoke shack. They call them pounds. Mm-hmm. They're burning up fish pounds, burning up people's property, trying to keep fishermen from fishing. The indigenous people. Mm-hmm. They're trying to keep the indigenous people from fishing when it's their right to do so. That's stupid. So, if you're in Canada and you are, uh, you know, you have a conscience and you, you know, believe that indigenous people have rights and they have the right to do what they do because of rights and because of not racism, please do your job. I mean, do your, not do your job, do your part, do your part and, you know, speak out because this is not right. And the police aren't really helping while they're not stopping indigenous people from fishing. They're not stopping these assholes from vandalizing and ruining things either. So just know that the United States, at least this person in the United States is with you guys and um so am i however we can help i'll you know or however i can help i'll i'll try well we do have a lot of listeners in canada so that's why i'm doing this story because we do have a large canadian listenership i reached out to our friend anthony at after midnight pod 
and he was like, Sock le bleu. No, I'm just Sock kidding. <laughs> um, he was just like, I'm like, he, he couldn't come on. He was just like, I can't right now. Like, I've got my hands full of other kinds of things. And, you know, so Anthony did not join us today. So we will not have any authentic French speak, French Canadian speak. <laughs> Okay. There's a lot of French. I'm so confused about what's going on. I was just asking. I reached out and I was like, hey, Anthony, I'm doing this, like the story, you know, have you heard of it? Oh, in Canada. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, because we're talking about Canadian maple syrup. It happened. All this stuff is going to happen in Quebec. Okay. And so I reached out to him to ask if he wanted to join us. And he was like, no. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, can't do it. Sorry, busy. But we still love you, Anthony. So it's all good. So we are going to talk about the... um, the Great Canadian Maple Heist, uh, Maple Syrup Heist. Okay. So um, my sources, of course, I heard about the story from Dirty Money. I listened to somebody's podcast about it. Um, I listened to like YouTube. I went to uh, Wikipedia. I did my research. So um, we're going to talk about it. Beginning in 1958, and this is all happening in Quebec, by the way. So did you know that like... Almost 80% of the world's maple syrup comes from Quebec, comes yeah. from like this particular region. I knew it came from Canada. Yeah. I didn't know that it was Quebec. And it's 80% of it. Okay. Of the world's. There, well, we have maple trees, but they don't produce maple syrup like that. Well, I'm going to go into the maple tree. Toronto maple leaves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so beginning in 1958, the maple syrup producers of, I think it's Baus region in the south of Quebec, participated in a joint plan to protect their rights as producers to collectively market maple syrup. I guess there was a lot of instability. I'm going to go into it, but there's instability in like production because it's based on supply and demand. You know what's really weird? Didn't I talk about maple syrup in the, in the fake foods thing? Our fake food story. You talked about honey. I feel like there was something about maple syrup that maybe I skipped or maybe I didn't talk about, but there was like a thing about maple syrup. I'm going to talk about it right now. But okay, go ahead. Thanks. <laughs> you surper, sit down. Hey, this is John and Ben with Geek Exploration, the podcast, and we have something new and exciting to share with you. We made a comic book. Now live on Kickstarter, Space Oddities number one. Space Oddities is an adventure comedy story about the crew of the Aftosa, Jorge McSanchez and Dirk. They are in the business of locating and procuring lost or misappropriated antiquities. While on a job, a young woman named Jet Paxton suddenly becomes an unsolicited crew member. Jet's quest to find her mother will point them towards a fabled artifact of immense power and all the danger that comes with it. Space Oddities is the beautiful, talented, and great-smelling love child of Indiana Jones and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So if you're into screwball space adventures with a little heart, visit SpaceOdditiesComic.com for the latest updates and to learn more. Space Oddities. It's good. I like it. I'm just saying, I remember, like, maple syrup being a part of my research. Maybe okay. I didn't talk about it. Well, I'm going to talk about maple syrup. Right. Maple syrup's mine. Okay. It's mine! <laughs> I've been waiting all day for this. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, In 1958, they decided to come together and collectively market um, maple syrup. In 1966, they created the Federation. And it is called the Federation of Quebec Maple Syrup Producers. Mm -hmm. FPAC. And they're like, apparently, they're like... They're they're, like a mob. They're the mafia. They're the cartel. (laughs) Figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the maple syrup (laughs) mafia. (laughs) We run in syrup in this motherfucker right here, okay? I just, I knew it. It it, it fits, okay? (laughs) They're the fucking mob. All right. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. So I was like, okay, this is interesting, and I want to know more about maple trees. So we're going to talk about maple trees. So maple trees are tapped, and that's how they get, you know, the the syrup. They're tapped by drilling holes into their trunks and collecting the sap. Do you remember that um, that episode of, um, it was a Mickey Mouse cartoon where Donald Duck goes and, like, he gets, he makes pancakes, and he goes to a tree and puts a spout in the tree and turns, turns it, on it on and gets and yeah it pours maple syrup and yeah. it's so like the funny thing is like maple syrup is not like thick mm-hmm. it doesn't do like the, but no. in the the cartoon it was all thick and like i was just like you lying son of a bitch fuck? how dare you 
Give me the, I remember this, though, a false understanding of how maple syrup is made. He wanted those pancakes with that syrup. You can um, consume the syrup directly from the tree. I'm sure. But it has a lot of water in it. So, like, when it goes through the process, you have to, like, boil it. You have to, um, the water has to evaporate. And then it becomes, like, a thick, syrupy mm-hmm. consistency. But Aunt Jemima is not maple syrup. So no, that so bitch ain't maple syrup. Don't, yeah, that's high fructose Aren't they corn changing syrup the name? Aren't they syrup. changing the name for Ma- Aunt Jemima? What did they change it to? I don't know. They, they, I, they haven't announced it yet, Okay, apparently. they could change it to bulb syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, buy a bulb syrup. Buy a bulb syrup, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> I'm sure people wouldn't like to be called bitches on their syrup. Well, it's it's fucking it's high fructose corn syrup and caramel color, which has freaking um, it's carcinogenic. So I do not buy high fructose corn syrup. Um, in my syrup, I get like the other one that's just like corn syrup, but the high fructose one <laughs> is the bad one. But well, the, the caramel color is what's carcinogenic. So. Oh, okay. So I'll pay attention to that then. So back to tapping maple trees. Um. So they tap, they collect the syrup, um, and it's the maple syrup is created by heating to evaporate as much water as possible, and that becomes the concentrated syrup. Most trees can produce about 20 to 60 liters or 5 to 15 gallons of syrup a season. A season, okay. Per season. So I was thinking, I was like, all right, so when can you start tapping these trees? Guess how old these motherfuckers need to be? The trees probably have to be at least like... 60 years old. Yeah, like 40 to 50 years old. Then they can start tapping the trees. Uh, and like when you tap it, you are drilling a hole in it. So it does create like a wound in the tree and it mm-hmm. heals over or whatever. Yeah. So you can continue to come back and tap the tree. But now you have all these scarred trees. Yeah, they're like, hey, bitch, stop sticking holes in me and stealing my blood. <laughs> Fern Gully, can't you feel its pain? I can feel its pain. And I <laughs> love that movie. And if you guys have not seen Fern Gully, go ahead and watch it. Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. Starring Christian uh, Slater. <laughs> and Robin Williams. The late Robin oh, Williams. Oh, Robin Williams was in it. Batty. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Batty. <laughs> I love yeah, that an movie. Yeah, antenna sticking out of his head. <laughs> My favorite line Green wires, red wires right through me. My favorite line. Yeah, if you like all your vitamins and minerals in one breath. Talking about living in L.A. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then it's Tim Curry. He's the smog. Yeah. It's Tim Curry. I am the smog or whatever the hell. Yeah. <laughs> Hit me one time. Ooh. Ah. Bro, back to the 90s. Ah. What does he say? Something's wrong. I don't know. Um, yeah. He, sorry. He was his, his, his word. His song was crazy. But it was really, like, it was really good. <laughs> it's deep. That movie is straight deep. I have it on DVD. But anyway, back to the syrup. Do you really? Yeah, I do. Can't you feel its pain? <laughs> <laughs> Going back to that line. Back to that line. So in my words, apparently maple syrup is the shit. <laughs> it is. And su- and, um, and supply, even use it for a diet. Yeah, and supply and cost depends on the syrup producers in Quebec. If there's a shortage one year, supply goes down. If there's a surplus one year, um, the cost goes down. So demand, I believe, yes, yeah. demand, demand. So I believe they wanted to form a strong front and a consistent cost for the maple syrup. Or whatever. I believe. That's what I believe. I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe. Um, while I was doing my research, I found out that there are poisonous um, trees that you can get sap from. Poisonous maple trees? They're not maple trees. Um, they're called... A, you said sap. It is sap. Some trees have poisonous sap. All trees have sap. Yes. But this tree is called a manchineal, a manchineal tree. And apparently they kick it in Florida and in like Central America. Okay, so it's not it's not in Canada. So why are we talking about this tree? I'm just letting people know that there's poisonous trees out oh, there. Oh, I know there's poisonous sap for sure. How do you know? Because if there's anything that comes out of a freaking plant, just like there's poisonous plants, there's poisonous fucking sap. Oh, yeah. Okay, you're right. Don't eat these trees. Eat some nightshade, guys. See how we're, how far that fucking gets. Well, you. did you know that tomatoes or and peppers vegetables? are, you know, yeah. in the nightshade family? Family, but they're not poisonous. Mm. Like they're fruits. There are some deadly nightshade, which is what they're called. Fam- uh, yeah. yeah. What's no. Call it? no, you're totally right because like these poisonous trees are also in the poinsettia Watch family. <laughs> the poinsettia family. And like, you know, they say poinsettias are poisonous to like cats if they eat them or something, right? I wouldn't. Well, as a person, I wouldn't eat it. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, 
pretty much maple syrup can be made from any species of maple trees. Um, trees that can be tapped are the sugar, black, red, and silver maple trees and like box elder trees. But I guess what makes it a really good tree is the consistency of sugar in it. Because if you get a fucking weak ash tree, you have to get like 60 gallons of its sap to make one gallon of like pure maple syrup. But they created this federation and apparently they're like the Gestapo in (laughs) in Quebec. They have like secret agents. They go and they test maple syrup like in the town because they're like, "Um, we've created this organization. And the problem with the federation, it's kind of like a union. So there's people that are like, okay, we're for it. We're happy. There's people like, hey, you fucking owe me money because if producers, they have a quota and they have a number to hit. They're like, okay, you're in the union now. You're tapping trees and you're doing this. You can only produce this much amount of maple syrup. Whatever you produce in surplus, we're taking that and we're putting it in the warehouse. What warehouse? There's just storing it? Yeah. They, you pay me for my shit, motherfucker. You pay me for my shit, motherfucker. Jimmy Hoffa. There's asked. this place. That's why Jimmy Hoffa disappeared. Oh, boy. It's called the um, International Strategic Reserve, the ISR. And that's where they um, also referred as the Global Strategic Maple Syrup Reserve. So it's like, hey, honey, you went over uh, five gallons of syrup. We're going to go ahead and take gallons. <laughs> we're going to take that and we're going to go ahead and put it in the reserve. And then what? What's done with it? Thanks. Have a great day. Bye bye. So when, let's say it's another year or, you know, years down the road, there's a shortage. Wait. Then they would pull from the surplus. Oh, my God. Oh my and God. then they would put it into the market. Okay. So <laughs> every funny. production line needs a lot number. Are they fucking using lot numbers for these? Like, so, oh, you have a surplus, but this is still part of lot number one, two, five, seven, nine. I'm sure they have some type of and then, so three, cataloging. Well, of it. Lot number one, two, five, seven, nine goes on sale in 1992. And then suddenly there's more of lot number five, two, one, seven, nine in 1997. That's fucking fishy. What the fuck? Well, that's not what we're worried about right now. I, but that. I don't know their cataloging system. But everything has an expiration date. Does it? Yes. Maple syrup? Everything has an expiration date. Let's Google it. So, if you are telling me that you're putting my fucking maple syrup from 1992 in the warehouse for a shortage year, and the shortage year happens five years from now, my freaking expiration date, depending on the expiration date's of maple syrup is going to come sooner or have passed. What's the deal? Calm down. It's, you're worrying about something that we don't need to worry about. I'm sure they have a system in place as to how the syrup is getting out to the market and they're moving the stuff in a way it should be. My I issue get it. is that if I'm losing money because now you put my shit in the warehouse and now you let the you fucking are, shit expire, you I'm are pissed. losing money. You Did are you losing pay money. me? Did you pay me for this? No, you didn't get paid. And okay, yes, you were losing. It there it is. I'm mad. You're losing money. I'm mad. There, you are mad. You are one that is not for the Federation. And there are a lot of people that are. Not, a, not at all. Get your Federation out of my freaking business. There's a lot of people that are happy with the Federation because they've stabilized the price of maple syrup. <laughs> okay, go ahead. My bad. You're such an ass. Listen, if you're doing the the maple syrup diet, as they call it, or the cayenne pepper diet, as they the call Beyonce it. The Beyonce diet. Which is just lemon juice, maple syrup. Look, I did it. I did the diet. So, I mean, I, I, I'm i not talking bad about the diet. I'm not talking good about the diet. I'm just saying, if you're doing the diet, well, then you're benefiting from the maple syrup market. Everybody loves maple syrup. There's not a problem with maple syrup. The problem is the way that they have to, like the producers or the farmers of it, they're mad about this. A majority of them are mad. They're being abused. About Listen, someone uh, associated it or um, compared it to prostitutes and pimps. <laughs> <laughs> he was like... The, I can't hate on that. Th- that's what he was like. He was like, you know, the producers are like the, 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 the prostitutes. prostitutes. And the Federation is like the pimps. They take your... Hun- they, I want they to call it honey. Mind. I want to call it honey. They take your syrup... And um, you still get the same amount of money, even though I've been sucking way more dicks for the day and I need to be paid. <laughs> yeah, I get it. You know, so let me go back to the story. Bitch, where my money? So the effort inspired uh, the formation of blah, blah, blah. 
So FPAC, that's the federation, right? So they produce 94% of the Canadian maple syrup. So the syrup in Canada, 94% of it comes from the federation. 77% of the world's um, syrup comes from the federation. So they have decided who you as a producer is able to do business with, who you as a producer is able to sell to or not sell to. Oh, God. This is the problem, and this is why people are pissed, and this is why this heist happens, I'm sure. Well, okay. Do you watch Good Girls? No, I haven't watched that yet. Okay, there's an episode about maple syrup where they go to fucking Canada to get like, I think, two or three or four barrels of maple well, syrup. Well, there's black syrup. Them all, there's black, black syrup. Market there's syrup. black market syrup. And this, this, the story is going to lead down the, the black market path. Yeah, there's, they, they go, they travel across the border to Canada to get a bunch of freaking black. I'm sorry. That wasn't good, girls. That was mom. Oh. They go because they they're they're based in it, on the show. They're in um, Napa Valley, and they go all the way to Canada to get some fucking maple syrup to sell. They must have gone to like Ontario or something. I don't know where they went, but they and then they were worried about you know getting caught. And it was funny because they were like these dudes that looked like gangsters, but they were like nice dudes. It's the maple syrup cartel. They're like nice dudes, and they ended up losing a barrel. It was it's, yeah. Well, let's go back to the story. So um, the FPAC, the Federation of the Producers of Maple Syrup, the Federation of Quebec Maple Syrup Producers, they maintain the Strategic Reserve of Maple Syrup, officially known as, like I said, that um, ISR. They have multiple warehouses in rural cities in Quebec towns. And I'm thinking multiple. I'm like, oh, shit, they got a bunch of places. They have, at this time, two warehouse that's not multiple that's two it's two <laughs> that's two a multiple of one what the fuck it's two okay so what happens is in 2011 there was a huge surplus of maple syrup they're like oh, fuck we've got a bunch of maple syrup what are we gonna do maple syrup. let's go ahead and rent a storage space and have another warehouse for our surplus sounds like a great idea great so they rent or they um, they secure another warehouse in, what was it called? Um, St. Louis de Blanford. De Blanford. Um, Saint Louis de Blanford. Saint, Saint Louis de Blanford. <laughs> um, this is the third warehouse and it holds up to 4,500 tons of maple syrup. Maple syrup is actually worth more than gas. I'm sure. They call um, Quebec the fucking... Um, well, they, yeah, it is because a gallon of gas is like $3. A freaking pint of maple syrup is like ten dollars um at the time of the scandal it was like worth 288 a pound which is at the time uh, about 20 times the value now it's gone up it's stupid whatever pounds why are they weighing it in pounds it's literally it's a it's a liquid so gallons ounces you know that makes more sense anyway, yeah go ahead sorry so there was a surplus in 2011 so they had to get this new- says pounds of gas Anyway, I need all these pounds of gas, please. Can you give me seven pounds of gas? Or gallons, you know, whatever. You don't go to the fucking gas station and ask for (laughs) pounds of gas. Brandy, stop it. Um, So they get this storage place in Blanford, San Luis de Blanford. Over the course of several months in 2011 to 2012, about 9,600 barrels valued at about $20 million of Holy shit. Maple syrup went missing. 20 million US dollars or Canadian dollars? Canadian dollars. Okay, that's still a lot. That's still a lot of fucking money. Yeah. Um, so they're like, oh shit, we're missing maple syrup. This is how it happened. So um they do an inspection once a year of the maple syrup. So the they're huge like barrels. Barrels, yeah. And they're very heavy. Like 20 pound drums or 40 pound drums or whatever. Bigger, way bigger. 40 they, gallon drums, I should say. Mm-hmm. Bigger, bigger, bigger. They're enormous. And um some guy goes up there and he has to scale the the drums. Big huge white tens or Yeah. Drums. drums. They're drums, like oil drums. Yeah. Like exactly. Big ass fucking metal ass drums. I just feel weird using that word drums, but no, like, that's totally mm-hmm. right. That's what it is. It's he a goes drum. to scale the drums and falls the fuck over because he grabs one and it's empty. Huh? Yeah, it's supposed to have 
syrup in it, right? He goes to climb up the thing and it's empty and he fucking falls off, right? They're like, the fuck? They're like, we've got empty drums in here. <laughs> What's ah. going on? Oh, shit. That reminds me of um, Men at Work. <laughs> I love that movie. Put that dude in that drum. They, yeah. It's time to do the nasty. <laughs> nasty. Well, no, they put a guy in a drum. A dead dude. I remember. Yeah. But okay. So, um, 2012. That was Ed Begley Jr., I think. They're anyway, doing, go ahead. Sorry. They're doing the inspection. The guy's like, okay, I'm just going to go up here and count all these drums and see what our surplus is so we can start moving this weight. <laughs> Maple weight. And um, they're like, oh, fuck. Ah, it's empty. They do an investigation and they figure out 9,571 drums of maple syrup is missing. 9,500. 9,571 drums of maple syrup has gone missing. $20 million Canadian of, wow. of syrup. And I'm watching, I was watching Dirty Money. And the dude's like, the problem is this shit is edible. Like, you could eat the stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, you can move it pretty simple, but it's a lot. So they do an investigation. They find out that, like, half of them are empty and then half of them are filled with water. Ah! So what they were doing was there was an elaborate operation and it happened at this third spot. So the I'm new gonna, place. The new place. Uh-huh. So I'm going to tell you what happened. This is what happened. What had happened was... It was this guy, um, Avec Caron. Oh, like he rented the space to the FPAC, to the Federation, because they were like, we need to do something with all this maple syrup. So he was like, okay, sure, you can kick it. So he's like, la da 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 He goes to the warehouse. He's like, holy shit, all this fucking maple syrup in here. Who's going to miss a few? few 9500 but then he's like um we got to move this i need to figure out or we need to talk to the right person so like i said there was a maple syrup black market so he reaches out to this fool named uh richard viares and he's the ringleader and he regularly and successfully sells maple syrup on the black market so people like yourself who doesn't want to give your surplus to the Federation. It's like, it's my fucking syrup. I'll do whatever the fuck I want with it. They're looking at you like a usurper. They're looking at you as a scoundrel, as a black market dealer. Because you're not falling in line with our rules and regulations. You can suck my asshole. You can suck my whole ass. Suck my asshole. But you're going to talk to Richard Richard, and he's going to get your stuff sold and get you that money. Give me the money that I'm due. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So he knows how to move it. Thank you. He gets involved. And they hire some people and they're like, okay, this is what we need to do. We're going to go ahead and take these barrels. We're going to go ahead and take them to, they call it a sugar shack. And that's where they do the boy. Well, there's a crazy little (laughs) shack beyond the tracks. And everybody calls it the sugar shack. Okay. So that's where they make the maple syrup. That's where they take the sap, boil it down, and produce and make the maple syrup. So um, what was I saying about the sugar shack? I don't remember. They take oh, it yes. to the sugar shack. So they take it to a sugar shack, and they go ahead and empty the barrels, put them in different barrels, fill the barrels up with water. And they were doing this for a number of months, and they were getting away with it just fine. Well, like, okay, we're, we're doing good. So they got fucking lazy. Uh, so then they're like, we don't have listen, time. Listen, listen. <laughs> Knock it off. If your process is working well, don't be lazy about it. Like, just get it done so people can get their fucking money. So you can get your fucking money and get out of there. Why are you choosing? Oh, well, we know how to do it this way. Like, just do it. Do the job you are hired to do. That's so stupid. Like, as a writer, I'm not going to say, well, you know what? Mm, this plot is so easy. I'm just not going to write some words. <laughs> it doesn't work. I have to fucking write the words. <laughs> Do the fucking job. <laughs> Stupid. Ugh. Well, that's usually how criminals get caught. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> this is how you get caught, uh, right? You get lazy, you get tired, you get sloppy. I don't have to wash this money. We'll just go put it back in circulation. Okay, great. Now the fucking feds are looking for those exactly like, sequential exactly. fucking bills, you idiot. Well, um, it happened from this place, and they stole 3,000 tons of syrup, of maple syrup. Oh, my God. 
So they realized that it happened like August 2012. That's when they reported that there was a theft. And then it, the police just went to work. They were like, okay, um, these drums look different. These drums look different. We have to figure out who did this. Like they they did their work to find this fucking maple syrup because apparently maple syrup is like, again, in Canadians' blood. They're like, this is our shit. This is our jam. Yeah. We love maple syrup. The Federation has done things to instill that people continue to use maple syrup in other countries that it's used worldwide. They hold like uh, cooking competitions. They have like festivals. They're trying to like break into like the the Japanese market. And they just want to make sure it sticks around and people continue to use maple syrup. Listen, listen. maple syrup is the shit. I will continue to buy maple syrup (laughs) until I can no longer eat maple syrup. Like, Maple syrup is bomb. Like, all that, like, fake shit that we have here. Yeah. Because, you know, fucking manufacturers are cheap and they don't want to buy actual maple syrup. So they pretend to give you maple syrup and they give you poison. Um, So, if you want some syrup on your pancakes or your waffles or your fucking French toast, get maple syrup. That is actual, real, 100% maple syrup from Canada. Okay? That's all. I just ran a commercial. Who, what maple store brand wants to fucking fa- sponsor us? Federation, give what us that? that Federation money, dog. We know you got it. We know you got it. And that, like Terry, you know, my son's grandma, they go to, they actually go to um, up north to get maple syrup. So because the Federation won't fuck with you, they're like, okay, we've got, they've got it out. They're just like, we'll sell this person, we sell them. If you want to get some of this, this good maple maple. You need to talk to the Federation. <laughs> <laughs> this is good maple maple. This is good maple maple. <laughs> You're going to talk to us. You're going to fuck with us. Yeah. So the police did an investigation. Cabin, that's not maple syrup. They did an investigation and they figured out like the moving parts and how they got it, got the people together. Like they hired drivers. They interviewed the drivers and they're like, I moved syrup, but I didn't know it was stolen syrup. They're like, oh, fuck. Okay. So you guys are doing this. Look, the feds, like if they were in the United States, the FBI would be like, you knew. You you're going to jail, bitch. Yeah, you knew. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you knew or not. You're going to fucking, you're going to do time. Yeah. Why don't you fucking just roll over on people? You knew. You knew. But we can, we can shorten your sentence. And you knew. <laughs> you're like, I didn't know. You knew. You knew. You knew. Secretly, you knew. You, you say you didn't know, but you actually knew. It's like, motherfucker, nobody told me anything. I just did what I was paid to do. Like, yeah. shut the fuck up and stop trying to blame me for shit. Stop being such a dick. Okay? Like, fuck you, dude. Like. I'm not paying, like, oh, you knew, you knew. If I put you away, then you pay for my kid's college education. So you did know, didn't you? And you're like, yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> well, you better say you did. You better say you did. Take this deal. Do five years. Better take this deal. Yeah, our fucking so, federal criminal system is corrupt as fuck. Yeah, it's, it's sketchy. So over the next three months, police had further su- um, success in locating portions of the stolen syrup. So they found some of the syrup, but they were still unsure of the final disposition of about one third of it. Much of it had apparently been sold to buyers who were unaware of its <laughs> origins. Who cares? It's and, maple syrup. <laughs> yeah. And who led to believe it had been produced in a neighboring New Brunswick. So New Brunswick is in Ontario, Canada, I believe. And... um. I believe their rules are different because like, you know, Quebec has different, I'm sorry, Canada has different provinces. Yeah. That's what their states are called provinces. And so in different provinces, the rules and regulations are different. Yeah. In Quebec, it's like, this is the Federation's maple syrup, bitch. If you want it, get it. New Brunswick is like, eh, whatever. It's cool. We'll produce it here. La, la, la. So they were moving the Quebec maple syrup to New Brunswick, where they were then selling it like to the U.S. They were selling it to Japan. And they were selling it to parts of Europe. Okay. Unbeknownst, but they were buying it black market. Okay. And um, that's how they moved that weight. They got a third back, but that's still fucking 20 tons. I'm sorry, 2,000 tons of um, maple syrup. Wow. People are always going to find like a cheaper way or a better way to do it. Yeah. So on December 18th, 2012. Even if it doesn't work for everybody else. Yeah. The police arrested three men known to have access to the warehouse for which the syrup was stolen. 15 people, 15 more people were arrested um, December 20th. So there are 15 people involved. But the big people were the Richard, uh, the Verreras guy, the um, the black market dealer, 
He was the ringleader. He orchestrated it and he went to jail. And I, apparently he fucking uh, blew the whistle on his dad because his dad was involved as well. <laughs> it's like, damn, Diz, you told on your daddy? Listen, if it's going to get me less time, why not? No yeah. loyalty. Yeah. Um, no loyalty. No loyalty. So there was... These hoes ain't loyal. Anyway, um... So that was just like one situation of it happened because it was the largest one ever. But there's been like there's been cases where the hunt the honey, the maple syrup has been stolen. Um, people do sell on the black market producers who um don't want to give their honey or their syrup to the the federation. I bet. But the federation apparently they say they like they bully them. They're like, show me, give me the honey, give me the syrup. You know what it is. Are they a, a government? They are government. They're a government-backed entity. Mm-hmm. Which is a problem as well. I think everybody has different... Like, you can't tell me that I'm going to be satisfied with X amount of money annually, but I know my trees have produced like three times my my amount. I want to be paid out for it, and they're not, which is a problem. So they're like, you owe me money for this surplus, and they're like, whatever, you'll get your money when you get your money next year. You know? Maybe. And, maybe. But, like, we're... Where is the guarantee that they're going to get paid for this? There is not the guarantee, but if they catch you selling on the black market or outside of the Federation, they find them with like, e- like just disgusting penalties, 50,000, 1.8. Like the guy who got caught, Richard did get caught and he went to jail under this thing. They chart, they find he's him. He's a producer? No, he's just a black market seller. Okay. And he's a part of the Federation as well because it was an inside job. That's, oh. a, that's also the thing. It's a, it was also an inside yeah, job. Yeah, we didn't hear the, Tell us about that part. I want to know. It's an inside job because to even deal with the syrup, to work for the warehouse, to be a producer, you have to be a part of the Federation. When you decide, hey, I want to go ahead and start tapping maple trees, you have to join the Federation and it has to be allowed. It has to be permitted. Well, what if you grow your own trees? There's You, you can't. If you grow your you, own trees, you, you can can't sell it. You can have your own maple tree farm, correct? Yes. So you can't tell me 50 how years to run in the making. My motherfucking farm. Like our family has been fucking our family has been to, been producing maple trees since fucking 1672. These are our trees. We own these trees. This is our property line. These are our trees are on our property. You don't get to tell me what to do with my You family. can't sell it in Quebec, bitch. Go to New Brunswick. Go fine. To- fine. But the thing is, that should be the way it should be, but it's not. They're like, you're in Quebec. You have the maple trees. We're looking at your maple trees from the street. We could see that you're sitting there putting taps in them. <laughs> We're watching you. We're spying on you. And they they come in and they try and muscle. Like, mm, oh, this is the way it's going to be. Oh, shotgun in hand. Out, well, does Canada have a... A, a, a gun? Yeah, yeah, like, does Canada have gun laws? I would have a shotgun. You come on my property talking about my fucking trip. I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. That's it. You were on my property. I mean, hello, the United States has different rules like that bullshit ass stand your ground rule, which is stupid and bullshit. But whatever. Um, Wow. You came on my property and tried to tell me how to fucking sell my shit. That's exactly the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, So I think that kind of just made it easier for these people to say, we're going to take this fucking syrup there's a surplus. They don't check it. Let's just go ahead and get this money. Mm, until they do check it. Until then. they do check it and these bitches don't fill up the fucking right. They don't fill up the drums and motherfuckers fall over. They probably could have got away with it if they didn't get lazy. That's it. Laziness is what always kills the fucking uh, the game. Mm-hmm. So they did jail time. Do it right the first time, motherfucker. Jail time! So... You know better it's time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, yeah. So the the Federation is still going strong, producing that, that that syrup. Of course they are. There's people angry about it. There's people happy about it. There's people saying that we're making a good living. There's people that are like, I, I want what my trees produced. So Yeah, because the people, I feel like the people that their, their trees produce garbage are like, well, we're benefiting. We're good. Yeah, we're, yeah exactly. We're, we're get- we're getting, you know, a lots of money and our trees are producing trash. Meanwhile, the people are like, our trees are like the freaking like 
She's the little bam. Trees. Snip, this snap, is snap. what you want. And now, now it's being taken from us because we can't get the value that it's worth or we can't get paid for the amount or whatever the case. And so I feel like there's that thing where like people that are producing a shit product are benefiting more than people that are producing a quality product. It's usually the people who don't pull their weight who enjoy and benefit from like a, a yep, collaborative that's true. situation. Yep, for sure. There's always the lazy fucks out there. But it's the people who aren't the, the lazies and that are, you know, feeling like I'm not getting paid what I should you guys do. You not pay me what I want. It's like, did you uh, do anything to earn what you're asking for? Stop asking questions. Shut up. <laughs> I thought this would be a little lighter for, you know, November 1st, right after the election. <laughs> November 3rd. Whatever. Second. Well, today's the 1st. November 3rd. And yeah, today's the 1st, but the, this comes out on the 3rd. The 3rd. I thought this would be light for you guys, something to enjoy and think about Canadian troubles rather than U.S. troubles, you know? And for our Canadian people, we love you guys. Oh, and- mm, I was on Twitter today, and I saw some person claiming to be a Canadian that was like, MAGA this, MAGA that. They had a Canadian flag in their in their bio and their profile, and they also had a U.S. flag. And I was like, what kind of Canadian is this? And then finally, I was like, you know what? You're a garbage. And then I had to like blast them with all kinds of profanities and like name calling. So I'm just saying, like those of you who call yourself Canadians, but you think that you're like in- interfering with the U.S. election, go fuck yourselves because you ain't shit but shit. And you ain't I don't shit have by time shit. Bye bye. That's all. You tell him, sister. I'm just saying, if you're from another country, you don't get to speak on this fucking election. This election has nothing to do with you or your fucking country. The fuck out of here. Whoop. <clears throat> all right. So that was our episode for the day. Brandy, thumbs up for the week. Hmm. My thumbs up for the week is NaNoWriMo and me hitting 75,000 words. This week. The goal is 50,000 words for the month, right? Right. So I haven't done the math. What's 50,000 words for the month divided by like four weeks and three days? <laughs> what What is that amount to? Isn't it 31 days? How many days are there this month? 30, month, 30 days. 50,000 words? 50,000 words. 30 days. 30 days comes out to... 16. Five, it's, it's 16, 66, like you said. No, yeah, no, 15, it's actually 15 or 1,667 words that in 30 days, that's 50,010 words. So a week is seven days, seven days. So what's seven times one, six, six, seven. I got it. So it's It's, more than 7,000. It's 11,670. That makes it sound like it's a all right, so twelve thousand words. That's what I'm. I'm going to shoot for twelve thousand words this week. I said fourteen because, like, if I hit two thousand words every day this week, that'll give me fourteen thousand words. Mm-hmm. I already hit two thousand today, so I'm like, okay, I can do that. Not all in one sitting, though, and that's the thing. Like, I have to like write, take a break, come back, write some more, take a break, come back, write some more. There were people, because we the, the kickoff party was today. Mm-hmm. There were people who were like, oh, yeah, I've already got 14,000 words. I'm like, bitch, you cheated. You, you lying before. bitch. Okay, Get out of here. You started way before fucking today, and you just plugged those numbers in. You can kiss my ass on that one, because I'm not even buying that. But You're cracking me up. I'm just saying, like, for me, as, like, for, um, for recording my work, I feel like this is a lot. Like, when I was writing Life, Love, and Margaritas, I was writing every day. But I wasn't charting how many words I was writing. And then when I finished it, because I took a break from writing it, I finished it in 2008, 2009 is when I finished it. Then I got hired an, uh, an an editor. Then I didn't touch it again until. So it took me like literally like at least seven years from I start the point where I started writing it to the point where I. Hired an editor to edit it. Yeah. I finished writing it. And then I went, I moved. So yeah, like four years it took me to write it. Then it took me another couple of years to edit it. 
And then it took me another couple of years to publish it. So there was a process. This year, I'm like, I'm trying to streamline that process and I'm trying to get from point A to point B in a much quicker rate. So I don't remember where I was going with this. Nor do I, but um, Brandy's excited for NaNoWriMo. The word count. She's killing the game. She's getting her word count on. Yeah, my point was I wasn't keeping track of my word count as I was writing that book. This one, however, I'm keeping track and I should have 60,000 words. By the end of the month. So that's what I'm shooting for. Um, cool. May or may not hit it. Whatever. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, what is your thumbs up, Sunny? Mm-hmm. It's November. It's a new month. I always love the beginning of the month. I feel like we should all start with like a even slate by the end of the month. I, like sales wise. That's how I feel. Like I hate. Like at the end of the month, how you feel like you're hustling and trying to get get everything in? I don't feel like that because I don't sell shit. I'm just talking about me <laughs> right now. So um, I don't I like, try to sell things. Great. Anyway, I just like the beginning of the month because I feel like we could kind of start off with a brand new slate of uh, this month. We're having Thanksgiving. I don't know. I'm really excited for gardening this week. I cut back my peppers and my okra, and I covered them with wood chips. I've got some beans coming up i'm just really excited for my garden i want to just keep it going we did that collaboration with the pod clubhouse for volume two of unsolved mystery this is the song okay um we did that so definitely look out for that and it was super sad and i want to volume two i that's why i was like i need to get my nails done because you were sad? I was sad and I needed something to make me feel good. Feet and hands. Paws and claws. Paws and claws. Um, but other than that, you know, it's a new week. We'll figure out what happens. Hopefully when we come back, we might have a new president. And um, listen, don't, <laughs> please don't talk. <laughs> I honestly, I feel like if the pumpkin in chief wins this election, I will leave. I will go to like Barbados or like to go to Barbados. Don't you have to make like what? 50 K a year. I don't know what it is. I don't really care. I will move to the Caribbean country and fucking just be there. You know, the Bahamas, we can put you up in the Bahamas. You could stay with lunch. <laughs> he would get on my nerves. Yeah. He would get on your nerves. And, be, and he would just be talking to me about sound. Like, listen, I'm trying to write. Shut the fuck up. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm on vacation. I'm trying to write. Leave me alone. Okay, this is not a vacation. I am working. <laughs> I am working. <laughs> well, you know, whatever. If you need to get your passport in order, sister, because you ain't going nowhere. Don't touch it. Any of you people that are out there that are like, I'm going to leave the country, wah, 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 and y'all don't got no passport, shut up. <laughs> you suck. Listen, yeah, I will be I a do refugee. Suck. Shut Refugees up. Refugees don't need passports. I will literally, I will be like, girl, but I will you walk a refu- across you are, your border. You are a refugee from the U.S. Go on back. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I will walk across your border like all the South Americans. Bye-bye, bye, privilege. Border. Sit down, Please privilege. Please help me. I am going to die over there. <laughs> they you won't kill, kill yourself. Me. You won't kill yourself. Huh? They will kill me if I if I come back. <laughs> it's so easy to get a passport. So if you don't have one, shut up. You're not going anywhere. Period. They can deny you a passport. You know that, right? The country can deny you a passport. Yeah, but for the states, you just have to have a passport for the U.S. Like with the U.S., it's like an international one. You can go to different countries. Different countries are like, oh no, bitch, you need to have certain clearance to come into our country. That's they true. have their rules and regulations. Yeah, but for us, we are fortunate that like, we can get a passport and we can try and go anywhere. And then these other countries are like, we don't want you. <laughs> well, most countries don't want us anywhere because of COVID. Exactly. Like, Europe, Europe's like, fuck you guys. They just shut down again. Go on home. So let me it. talk about my thumbs up. So I had a really good conversation with this uh, gentleman I used to work with when I worked for Deluxe. He lives in the UK and he indulged me with a demo of my, my product this week. You did a demo for you? No, I did a demo for him. And he works for the same company? We used to work for the same company. Oh, okay, gotcha. He works for a different company now. And so, like, we just talked, and he's a father of two girls, and, like, his youngest is, like, five months old. Oh, he's like a baby. Yeah, and he's got, like, maybe a three-year-old or four-year-old. But it was just really good to, like, to talk, just to talk to somebody, you know? Like, I work from home, and I'm by myself. I don't talk to a lot of people because people don't want to talk to me because I'm trying to sell them stuff. 
But it was good to just to talk to him. He was in, he's in the UK and he's like they're shutting down again, and um, like they they shut down tough. They opened up and now they're shutting down again because their cases are rising. Their cases, yes, and ours are too. Yes, uh, it's the season, and we need to really slow the fuck down. It's flu season, and the the I can't wear a mask. I can't breathe with a mask. Well, I'd rather breathe oxygen than CO two. And I and you can't tell me how to live my life. And all those those people are the ones that are fucking it up for everybody else. And if you're one of them, you can just turn this fucking podcast off right now because I can tell you right now that I literally, if I ever saw you in person, would tell you to go fuck yourself. Oh, well, um, I got to talk to to you. She ain't scared. um, But it was good to connect with him. And I've realized that I need attention. I need a lot of attention. I I need to, I need to interact with people. Like when I'm at work and I'm like with friends or I get to hang out at happy hour, I get to like, like, flirt at a safe distance with my friends and just be fun and just like, you know, just have like casual conversation with people like at here. My flirt ha- at a safe distance. Like what's the like James or something. Like, I can just like, Oh, James, how are you? Smack him on the butt. And it's totally fine. You know, whatever. That's how I roll. If you're not with it, sorry, but whatever. I you need, go to jail. I will might go to jail. <laughs> but what I'm saying is like, I've realized like during this quarantine, that I need a certain amount of attention and if I, and I need it and it's a problem. Uh. It's not a problem, but it is a problem. But um, I've, I'm realizing this about myself that um, I need to be around people. Like I need energy and I'm a succubus. <laughs> Basically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Be a succubus. That's right. <laughs> no, like it's different. Like we're away from people. We're not in the office. And we're, we're pretty secluded. Dynamics are different, yes. It's, it's different. And I'm a social creature. And I, I am, you know, I'm an extrovert. And I need to be around people. I like parties. I like to be talking to strangers. In the mix. And I, I need that. <laughs> you need to be in the mix. I do. That's my thumbs up. Hopefully the mix will open up again soon if we can behave ourselves and no, get through this season. Not, because there's assholes in this world. Oh, there's the assholes, assholes are the ones that are the vocal. The most vocal ones are the assholes. Yeah. They're the ones that are like, ah, oh, I can't wear a mask because I can't breathe. And you can't tell me how to live my life. Meanwhile, you living your life is fucking with a bunch of other people and they're dying because of the way you're living your life. Yeah, man. You're and just spreading you don't it. care about anybody but yourself because you're a cocksucker and you need to be fucking murdered. <laughs> Jeez. Um, Whoa. So, Jeez, I'm serious. I have I have extreme views on these people because I keep... Listen, I posted a view... I mean, I posted a video on TikTok and I was like, please just wear a mask for for the love of everything that's dis- decent. Wear a mask. Right. The comments that I got were, I can't breathe with the mask. You can't tell me how to live my life. Oh, you're trying to guilt people into wearing masks. I'm like, listen, the mask is not for you. That's what you're not getting. Yeah. You wearing a mask is not for your benefit. It's for the protection of other people, more vulnerable people, more vulnerable people than you. And you don't give a shit about them because you refuse to wear a mask. So if you're a carrier, you're intentionally causing them to have life threatening fucking conditions. But you don't give a shit about that because you can't breathe, but you can breathe because you're wearing a fucking mask. And, and you're talking. <laughs> if you were in the hospital and a doctor was operating on you and they weren't wearing a mask, I promise you'd have a problem with that. Yeah, you would. Because, oh, if you came out of the fucking, your surgery, your appendicitis surgery, you got your appendix removed and you came out with pneumonia or some fucking fucked up infection because the, the doctor didn't wear a mask, you'd want to sue. So yeah. don't fucking be an asshole and contradict yourself. You want to protect yourself, but you don't want to protect other people. It's we've definitely realized who we are as a as a um, country. W y p i p o. You guys are the problems. Deal. Fucking come to Jesus. We've with that shit. definitely realized that we are selfish people. No, no not us. No, there's a lot of selfish Humans people are selfish out there. And the w y p i p o are the ones that are the most. That's it. It's, That's all. It's a, care. it's a fact. And Change this my is, mind. Um, fight me. <laughs> fight me. Casey, we love you. Um, and we love all of you guys for listening. So we're going to just put a pin in this right yeah, now. Yeah, we're going to get off because like. And wrap I, it up. I can literally go out and fight a billion She's people. She's hot. She's going to fight people, guys. We'll get it on live. stupid. You killed your own family members because you don't want to wear a mask. Fuck you.
Brandy, I love you. Like Bill Burr said, if you want to kill your, if you want to kill your grandma, <laughs> go for it. But again, you don't give a fuck about your grandma. So why the fuck would you give a fuck about anybody? The random person that's walking down the street or, you know what I'm saying? The child, the baby that's in the fucking uh, stroller. You can go screw yourself. And that's all. Brandy. Love you guys. It's bald bitches. <laughs> I'm Sunny Hepburn. And I'm Brandy Blaze. And this was Book, Book of, of Lies. Lies. The it's podcast. Bald bitches. It's bald bitches. It's bald bitches. <laughs> It's bitches. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like, go ahead and leave us a review. Connect with us on social. And we love you so much. Thank you for listening. And please come on back. And like Brandy said, it's... It's bald bitches.